What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for Weekly Indie Newcomer, the weekend series where you and I take a look at an indie game that's been bouncing around my brain over the course of the last week. This week, we're taking a look... Well, yesterday we took a look at Dad Quest. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Moose Man, which I don't even know what to expect from this game. It came out on Friday. You're going to see this probably on Sunday, but it came out on Friday. It was embargoed till then, so I figured I'd sit down, and judging from the screenshots and the gameplay I've seen, looks like a really, really interesting indie title. Looks a little bit adventurous, maybe like a little bit of RPG in there, but frankly, I don't know. Haven't seen the game yet. This is my first impressions of Moose Man. Let's get going. If at any point during the course of this playthrough, you like what you saw, down in the description is where you can find the link to get the game for yourself. Alright, so, I know you didn't come here to listen to me blather on at the beginning of the video. Let's just get started with the impressions, shall we? Shuan <laughs> Kuvlan. Пашку до бордис, приданню краї занотаса. Я шку візьми нам, що ту ще змощила мон будмаса. І віліч туман лан пемута з чижим чапка са жребі. Куї мір баріяма свічіща, куї мірозданні лан шебрас. Шон ділиш біла муфти з силан куйлану туй пондас. Кув за кув паші лан кувлиш. Пондан тъдни вековай знанни. Пемут къджит парма на великай, дух аджи с барем. It appears as though I am able to move around. Oh, wow, look at it. It's hand-drawn and everything. That looks really, really good. Do I want to go left or do I want to go right? If I go left, there's a big shiny... There's like a polychromatic eagle over here, so I'm going to go left. Ooh. Press F1 to view your artifact collection. Oh, nice. The winged moose man travels all three layers of creation. He is accompanied by spirits and a reptile is below his feet. Artifact of the 7th or 8th century from the Troitsko Pachersky district in Komi. Huh. Based on materials from the book Perm Animal Style, VA Oboran Gien Chagan, Perm 1988. Cool. I have no idea what we're talking about right now, but sounds awesome to me. I've never seen a game that came with references before. They're like, yep. You can read the book about this. Go do it. And I'll be like, oh, but that requires me to use my eyeballs for things other than staring at a screen. It might also require me to go outside, and I'm not so good with that. That's not a skill that I have. Oh, hello, effervescent grass. Oh, no, never mind. Those are trippy mushrooms. Oh, shit. We've got a hat now. Bro. That's so dope. we got a skull hat. See, if I was in tribal times, I would like to think that I would be like the shaman who gets the super awesome hat. And then I can auto-walk. Oh. Okay. Well, then let's auto-walk. But I always wanted to have an elongate skull hat and maybe like some beads that I wear around my neck and like a shaky thing on a stick that goes shaka 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 What's up, creepy statue? Idols sing of ancient myths. Press F2 to read them. Anthropomorphic figures surrounded by moose men. Artifact of the 8th or 9th century from the village of Redicor, Churden District, Perm Cry. This is the Perm Animal Style Artifact. Animal Style is an approach to decoration of cast artifacts depicting animals and a man with animals. Holy shit, we're going full-on anthropologist here. No! Oh, I can take the hat on and off. If I put the hat on, there's like a soul bridge. Greetings, strange elongate dead babies. I shall use you as a bridge to cross over. There's also a little hoppy fish down there. I wonder what spirit fish tastes like. I bet they taste like trout. That's my guess. I bet they taste like trout. So we can look at this. So there's myths of the Sirayu River. The middle world is separated from the lower one by the great river Suryu. It circles the worlds, concealing the world of the dead from the world of the living. Vakul lives in the waters of Suryu. He devours each and every one who dares trespass his dominion. Only the ones who know called toadies have the knowledge to find a bridge leading from one world to the other. There are other rivers that flow between worlds. Crazy. Can I take my spirit hat off? 
Oh, greetings, giant fuzzy forest kitty. I am a fan of your people and your body of work. Yes, rest now and purr that I might pet you. So my guess is that I gotta sneak past this thing. How I go about sneaking past, I don't know. It looks like it's working so far. Basically, I hope that this cat is really, really inept at smelling me. Because it's my only hope. Eh, looks like once you're past him, he doesn't care anymore. He's like, ah, it's behind me. It's too much trouble. When it was in front of me, that was worth waking up for. When it's behind me, eh, we could do it another day. So we've got the creation of men. Yen filled the middle world with spirits, animals, and men. He planted the seeds of the tallest pine and fir trees with the fish. He filled the rivers. The good and useful spirits he sent to the middle world, and the evil ones he sent to the lower world. And Osh was sent to guard the border. Oh, it's gonna wake. I was hoping I could ride that thing. I'll be honest with you. I was really stoked about the possibilities of riding it. Maybe put a little armor on it or something. Oh no, it's a bear. Ah, my ass! Ah, I can take off my hat so that I can pass through. Ah, okay, so we pressed the space bar, and now he's gonna try and chase me down, because he's a douchebag bear like that. No, bear, leave me alone. I'm just barely gonna make it. I'm just barely gonna make it! Yeah! I'd jump off a cliff to avoid a bear, too. I'll take it. I don't really want to do it, but if I have to, I will. The oh, so that was Osh right there? Oh, that was Osh. Okay, so what did we find? Got a bear token. Bear is the guardian of the lower world, artifact of the 6th century. A bear along with a moose were sacred animals for the creators of the artifacts. A bear depiction is rarely included in multi-figure compositions. Damn, I might have to look up what we're talking about right now. I'm kind of interested. I feel like I feel very much like an outsider right now. I'm very much confused about what's happening. The bear feast. Hopefully it doesn't involve me. A hunter has to do a lot of things if he wants to hunt Osh. Osh is immortal, and only temporarily does he give his meat to the hunter. It is forbidden to speak during the hunt because Osh will hunt the hunter down if he knows his voice. The great feast should be held after Osh was caught. The head of Osh should be the sacrifice to his father En, and a multitude of songs should be said to conceal those who brought sleep upon the beast. Wow. I'm kind of getting into this right now. I'm not going to lie to you. It's simplistic so far and it's slow paced, but like, I've got like that feeling, that feeling of immersion. Why is that? Oh, it's moving. I think. Is it? Oh, so it follows me over to here on those weird little slug beast things. Or that might be one slug beast. I don't know if that's a bunch of slug beasts or if it's several slug beasts. But I'm going to have it bring the ledge over to here. And then we'll shift out of the spirit form. Yep, and that'll allow me to walk up the rocks right there. Okay, so we interact based on two different worlds. There's like the physical world and there's the spirit world. That's pretty sweet. I like shaman powers. This is dope. Shamans are like my favorite class in every MMO and like every RPG ever. Shamans are always the best. Chud. All the spirits bear the name Chud. They were created by Yen himself on the dawn of creation, but some Chud were born after. The dead that didn't pass the last road. Some of them are useful and help us. Some are evil and can bring misfortune. Many things have their own spirits. When you know the ways of the spirits, you can control them. In the U.S., Chud is an insult. <laughs> It's like an old, like, late 80s, early 90s insult, though. Like, I don't think I've ever heard anybody use it outside of the 90s. There's going to be a spirit bridge here, huh? Oh, I failed at spiriting. Oh, there was a, there's a worm log over here. See? See? I should have known better. I thought maybe I could walk on spider webs or something. I thought it was going to be like, spider shaman, spider shaman. That thing looking out from behind that bush right there is creepy as shit, and I don't want to look at it anymore. That's like what, I, what I'm what i worried about when I was like eight years old and you go to bed and the light first goes out. All you think about is that thing just being like, -na 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 -na, and creeping out from behind like the closet that you left open. Uh-uh. Nope. 
There's nothing going on in the spirit realm right now. The last road. Our soul that we call Ort walks along the last road when we die. She travels through all three worlds and finally reaches the Iron Mountain of the Ancients. All spirits know about the last road and will help Ort. So is this the last road over here? It looks like I can walk on this, but like... It looks like we're in the land of the dead or something. Like all these people aren't giving me a good feeling right now. They look like they're crying and upset. Some of them look like they're on big, like, I don't know, duck boats? Goose boats? I can't imagine that boats shape... Oh, they've got red eyes. That's creepy as all shit. I'm not feeling this. Ort walks the Suryu River that flows through the underground. The sinful souls get bogged in the river and they rot there forever. Thousands of foul souls become the disgusting liquid and so the river became a swamp, black and thick like tar. When your time comes, you should go boldly as there is no way back. So like if I stay in the spirit realm, do they wake up? Because some of them had like red eyes and stuff. Oh shit, I fell into one of the black swamp puddles. No, and then I got groped by a zombie. Okay, so let's just not be in the spirit world right now. Being in the spirit world in the land of the dead seems like a bad plan. Let's just avoid that for the moment. We're going to walk across some logs. We're going to wear our dope-ass hoodie and wield our super awesome cane. And we're just going to, like, hope that bad things don't happen. That one looks like he's about to try some shit. I know you are. Don't lie to me. I guess we have to be in the spirit realm so we can sense their hostilities or whatever. Otherwise, it seems like they're just grabbing at us randomly. Ooh, worm log! Hooray! Onwards, worm log! You are my only friend. Let us go forward. That dude in the background seems to be indicating that I should go to the right with his flipper-like arm. This world is spoopy as hell. I'm not feeling this. This is creepy. Minkus. Minkus were among the first spear. Minkvas were among the first spirits that Yen created. He didn't give them consciousness, but gave them the life immortal. They stand silently in the special places. The Minkus of the woods rise above the highest trees, and the Minkvies of the swamp stare into the fog for eternity. And the Minkvies of the lake drink water so that it will fall as rain. Okay. So they're benevolent? I don't know if they're benevolent or if they're evil. Either way, I'm going to walk past them. Everything so far has seemed at least a little bit evil. Like, if not completely evil, then slightly... Oh, shit, there's zombies over here. Well, that's not good. Do they pass through the rock? Is that what it is? Oh, shit, they go up the rock. Oh, no. So if they go up the rock, what do I do? I thought they were going to go through the rock if you shifted out of the... <gasps> we could dump them into the river. No! Log, how could you? Oh, betrayer. Foulest betrayer. Oh, no. The log's been retracted. I have to go this way. So they want to drink from the water. Oh, I can use the rock as a shelter. Oh, cool. That's unique. I like what they're playing at with this game, though. Like, all the puzzles and the mechanics so far have been an interesting shift. By going in between the two worlds, you can make a lot of items interact in ways you don't expect them to interact. And that's pretty sweet. Are more Zeds going to come out of this thing? Or are we good here? I think we're probably good. <laughs> Камай спондот ащи солан. Край тому джиток янен, утка уїс волнаєзет. Утка кольті шогміс, їн прародітель мортезлан. Мідо джавермас, мортлан кіріщ і буддухлан родняй. Котлан кишіщ міріщ шогміс, вилон мір і шаріщ мір. Улищ мір шогміс вауфтен, кутан вели пєму джір. What language is she speaking right there? Somebody have to tell me in the comments because I'm ignorant. I don't recognize it. 
appears as though we're in a spoopy cave now. Ah, there was a switch right there in the physical realm. I wonder what, why are we journeying right now? Like, do we have a go- Oh, there's the bear. Ort, or whatever his name was. Oh, that's cool. It throws the shadow on the murals in the background. That's really awesome. This is definitely one of those artsy games. It's trying to, I mean, it actually has legitimate mechanics, though. Like, that's the thing, is that it manages to be both artistic and interesting simultaneous. Oh, shit. Under the sky dome of Mosheads was I born by the shaman Pevson. Like eternal birch tree did I grow my mighty car. And as son of bear did I die in fierce and bloody fight. You have chosen path of darkness where you'll find the shining Shandi. If you'll die, the world will perish. Cause the sun will fade away. Yet I'll see you at this pathway of the dead you follow. Here await I the awakening that was long ago foretold. Has kind of like an epic of Gilgamesh feel to it. Like with the way that they word the sentences and whatnot. Like with the syntax, I suppose, the sentence structure. Cool. So, we probably have to recite the story. It's only three switches, so technically you could brute force it pretty easily. So let's say I want to go through there. Let's look at the story in the background and see if we can sort it out. So under the sky dome of the Mooseheads, I was born. Like the eternal birch tree I grew. As the son of the bear did I die in fierce and bloody fight. Okay, so he was born. He grew like a tree and then he was killed like a bear. So it's this one, it's this one, and then it's this one on the right. Perfect. Sweet. I'd rather do it the right way than just sit there trying out different like permutations and whatnot. It seems lame. Is there a new story added to Osh? Bear named Osh lies silently. He guards the underworld. Only the dead can walk freely to the kingdom of death. And that is why no spirit from the world of the living and no man can pass Osh. And that is why the hunter that has killed the bear should give him the great honor. Huh. This is really, really cool. I'm actually really infatuated with this right now. Like, as far as gameplay goes, it's very, very simple. But at the same time, they feed you enough information on a drip as you move forward to where you're like... the war It's kind of the same feeling I got when I played Dark Souls. They feed you the information on a drip. And it's enough to keep you interested in scratching your head and being like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Oh, I see what's going on. Like, and it's just enough to where you're always slightly confused, but at the same time... Ah, there we go. So we have the Golden Age. The ground was rich and the barley ears grew full from ground to the top. The sky was close to the ground and the birds that flew through their starry path one could catch with his bare hands. The men reaped barley with an awl. Once one of the men found a sickle, the sickle fell from his hands, and while falling, the sickle cut the head from a man. His body stomped through the ground and became the gates for insects and evil spirits of the lower world. The then sky soared high and became unreachable. His body still lies in the border of worlds. Kudim Osh is the son of a one-eyed shaman Pevson and a bear. He became a tribe leader, but not everybody was fond of Kudim. Treacherously, they sent him to Vogel Swamps, where he lived with the cursed bride with the head of a monster. Everyone who tried to marry her got scared of her visage and was executed by her father. But the monster bride fell in love with Kudim and showed him her true beautiful image. He took her as a bride and returned with her back to the homeland where he established the car that was called in his honor Kudim Kar. Later and again with the help of a treachery, enemies sneaked into Kar disguised as traitors. Kudim Osh fought with them bravely but he perished in battle. He was buried under the mountain where he is still waiting to be wakened. Kudim Osh will rise again when our tribe will be in grave danger. Among the depths of the endless ocean, the lower world took its roots when Yen was born, so that there would be a place for Dame to dwell. There are several paths that lead to this ancient place, where, the li where live the dead and forgotten spirits await for their time to come. There in the depths of the underground, it is possible to find the hot flames of Shandi. Shandi's hot flames, yo. Gotta get yourself some.
But yeah, like I said, it's sort of, they feed you information on a drip, and as you see things, you start to make connections between the story they've been feeding you and the imagery that they are giving you a couple minutes later. On top of that, you've got little puzzles and things that are interesting, like that rock puzzle where the zombies go over and you go under. That was unique. I liked that. I thought that was pretty cool. So there's a spirit over here. How do I get the spirit to help me? Genesis. Through the endless ocean, the duck once swam. She gave birth to an egg, and Yen was born. A moose, the first spirit, first god and father of all men. Yen saw himself in the reflection of the ocean, and so out of these two moose heads, the sky dome emerged. The upper world, where gods and souls dwell, the shell of an egg out of which Yen was born, became the earth, the middle world. In the murky depths of the ocean of the lower world took its roots that there be a place for the dam to dwell. Out of smaller parts of the shell, a lot of ancient spirits were born. The great six-legged moose, Vorsa, the master of the forest, Vakul, the master of the river, Kars, the bird of prey, and the uncountable lesser spirits that we call Chud. Is that going to let me walk on it? Oh, it does. See, I thought that was in the spirit world, and so I was in the physical, so I was like, I don't know if I can walk over this. It also, I like the way that the, the hero doesn't know what he's doing right now. Like, he's just walking through an unknown land that he seems to have some knowledge of because he's able to shift between worlds and he's able to figure out these secrets and appease the ancient spirits. But at the same time, the player is not told, so it feels like a great kind of... It feels like a sojourn almost. Where are we going? What is the point of this? I don't know, but I assume we'll find out because our character seems to have some rough idea of what's happening. He just can't speak, and so we have to learn it through the story itself. The daughter of men. Once upon a time, Yen went to search for a wife. He came to the dugout where an old couple lived with their three daughters. Yen threw down his hide and told the daughters to take care of it. The older and the middle one could not resist to eat a little bit of fat from the moose hide, and only the youngest one took proper care. The youngest daughter was chosen as a wife. Yen and daughter of men gave birth to seven sons we call the moose men, half men and half gods. They learned many things from their father and mother and learned the ways of all spirits and misfortune of men. Yeah, you can't hang out with the homeboys for too long without figuring out something nasty about... Oh, there's a dragon bridge up here. It looks like I can descend down into the earth, though. Although I'm not sure... Okay, so I can't go any further than right there, so we're going to have to take the bridge upwards. There we go. So we'll travel up this weird little crocodile bridge thing, the gator bridge. And then we got this worm guy over here. I don't know if he wants to follow us one direction or the other. So it looks like we got to bring him down. Well, actually, if I go through him, I can put him over here. That'll allow me to get up onto that ledge right there, hopefully. So we pass out of the spirit realm and go to the top. But yeah, this game is called Moose Man. Interesting little title. It's rare that you get an artsy game like this that still manages to captivate without being pretentious or anything like that. And I think the game has done a pretty good job so far at getting me fascinated with whatever's going on. I hope you'll check the game out down below in the description. That's where I've always got the info for if you wanted to get any of the games for yourself that I play here on the internet. If you've never seen what Weekly Indie Newcomer is before, it's a weekend show that I do where I look at a lesser showcased game that I think looks cool, just based on, you know, the screenshots and the videos that I've seen of it. I'll go through and I'll do a first impressions video, having never played it before, and talking about the things that I'm feeling, experiencing what I like and what I don't like as I go through. I do this because a lot of indie games do not get the exposure they deserve, and there's a lot of people out there spending thousands of hours creating cool, artistic projects that just never see the light of day, or they sell like 10 copies on Steam, and so the developers just, like, go back to their day jobs. And... It's a sad world where somebody who creates something super awesome goes back to their day job and just never creates again because they figure there's no demand for what they want to do. So this is the Moose Man. Check it out. If you like what I do here on the channel, be sure to check out the Patreon. It's a great way to support me and make sure that there's always fresh games and content being released to the channel. My name is Splattercat. I will see you all later. Check out the Moose Man. It's a pretty interesting little game. It's a weird one, right? Bye, everybody.